All I want to do was give my girlfriend additional storage, and I just end up building an entire mini data center at home that could probably host Netflix. Okay, maybe not Netflix, but you get the point. It escalated very, very quickly. Before I even realized, I started doing so many more things than I originally saw to do. I was running Docker containers and all that, but before we delve into that, we do need to go back to the very beginning. It all started how every good story starts, with the need for additional storage. My girlfriend came to me one day, she was like, I need more storage. <laughs> She doesn't sound like that. And so I was like, you need more storage? Bet I can get you a NAS, right? So I'll take a look. I search for NAS storage, hard drive, stuff like that. And uh, quickly, I found out they're pretty expensive. Uh, just for the bay alone, I was seeing like $120. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's kind of a lot, but okay, sure. But then, oh, it doesn't come with a hard drive. Then, of course, I want to run RAID on there. So I, I'm going to get two hard drives, but I also want something pretty big. So like four terabytes, two terabytes around there. And just to say, it was very expensive, very, very fast. I was like, I'm pretty sure I could build something and have it have more functionalities than just network attached storage. So I started scouring the internet, looking for alternatives, man. What can, what, what can I do? What can I possibly do? And that's when I stumbled across a subreddit called Home Lab. And this is exactly what I was looking for. And the Home Lab is basically a lab that you set up at home <laughs> web thought to do all sorts of things such as experiments learnings and in my case for self-hosting and additional storage and if you're still confused by the term home lab here's a real world example i have one usb with personal photos another one with work files and a third one with just random downloads i don't know and if i ever need a file on my work laptop I'll need to find the correct USB, I'll need to plug it in, copy over the information, and let's just say if I can't even find the USB, well, I'm kind of screwed because all the information was there. With a home lab, potentially you could set up network storage and allow access to your files without messing around with USBs. And it doesn't need to be files. Maybe you have a big collection of movies, TV shows, or just old family recordings. You could rip the video files and have it available for streaming over your local network using something like Jellyfin or Plex. And usually people take old computer hardware that is destined for the dump and repurpose it for a server. And I thought to myself, you know, as a person that has a degree in IT, I could definitely do this and this isn't anything new to me. But before I could move forward, I just needed to take a look at what other people are using their home apps for. And then I started looking and, and that, that was just the beginning. You could run your additional network attached storage, you know, it's fine, it's normal. You can also do a media server, which is okay, it's getting kind of crazy. You could do audio library. You can even run Docker containers with other services inside it. So there's so many things you can do. But I cannot get too ahead of myself because I don't even have a computer. What they recommend is get an old computer, primarily off of eBay, like some used computer, Facebook Marketplace, something like that. So that's exactly why it is. The advice was mostly consistent. Get something that's A, low power consumption, since it's gonna be on 24 seven. B has pretty modern hardware for the most part, because depending on what you wanna do with it, having older hardware could be a limiting factor. So keep that in mind. And C has a good amount of additional SATA ports, which will allow you to plug in more hard drives. So with all this in mind, I decided to purchase this. The HP Elite Desk 800 G3 small form factor. It did come with an Intel Core i5 7th generation with four cores, which is not too bad. It did also come with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. And you know, the hard drive was actually a plus for me since I'm thinking of replacing it all together with two four terabyte hard drives anyways for RAID. And all this for about a hundred and thirty dollars now i wasn't out of the woods just yet i did need to get a few upgrades so i decided to go to our lord and savior jeffrey bezos i bought an ssd i bought two four terabyte hard drives and a few bells and whistles but overall um i spent around 320 dollars in my defense this is an investment so i ordered everything it's gonna get here in a few days i guess i'll come back when everything is here that way you don't have to wait for it and it's just seamless for you like that for you know, I lied, I lied, everything's already here. Hey, woo! Power of the internet, power of the internet. Upgrades, upgrades, hard drives. Sorry about that, sorry about that. Let me compose myself, so. Yeah, I got got all these things. It's right here. If it's not in camera, then it's okay, but if it is, it's right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the HP Elite Desk 800. Make some noise. Straight from eBay.com.
So first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove the old hard drive and we're going to be replacing this one with two 4 terabyte hard drives and this cost us around $85 for one but right now it is cheaper so do with that what you will. The front actually hinges forward which is pretty good and it allows us to access the RAM sticks. For right now, I'm going to leave the RAM that I came with and down the line I'll upgrade it. Then to remove the CPU cooler, I did need to use a drill. <laughs> And a review of this, look at that thermal compound. It's caked on there. It was in desperate need of being replaced, so we cleaned it up. And it revealed our gorgeous Intel Core i5, seventh generation, looking pretty as always. Then we obviously applied some additional thermal compound. We gotta take the big boy, drill that shit back in, and it's good as new. Now it's pretty heavy to turn, not gonna lie. And we're replacing the old power supply with a new one. And the new one's actually 400 watts. The reason is that down the line, I like to expand. So we do, we do with that what you will. And we, I also got this 256 gigabyte SSD for $32. And just like that, we're done. Okay, so it's ready. It's here. It's time to install Proxmos. We have it over here. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. This is the one. Let's go. Okay, so the Proxmox server is finally up and running. So if I access this IP address, it should work. So let's type that in. And it's up. Victory. So now that we have Proxmox installed, the next step is setting up RAID. And I decided to do this within Proxmox as a ZFS pool. Now, I could have done this later in Open Media Vault, which is what I'll be using for my NAS solution, but I honestly found the approach a lot more straightforward on Proxmox. And if you don't know what RAID is, let me give you a quick explanation. So RAID stands for Redundant Arrays of Independent Disk. I know, simple name. And in terms, it basically combines multiple drives into one logical unit. And depending on your RAID type, because they do come in different types, it can give you extra speed, extra redundancy, or both. And it basically protects your data from drive failure. So in our case, we're gonna be running RAID 1, which is just mirroring. So now that RAID is set up, the next step is getting Open Media Vault running. And the setup was pretty straightforward, so I won't bore you with the details. But I basically created a virtual machine with Open Media Vault as the operating system. I then set up network access with a stack IP address, create a user accounts for anyone who needs access to the drives, and finally configure the network share. And because we did all those things, we can actually access our storage from any device on the network. If we take a look here at the screen, I'm on my Windows computer, and I'm able to access my network files, that green syringe looking icon, and I'm able to go into here, play some files, copy files, do, do whatever I need to do. And I can access this from my phone as well and from my other devices. And this is really, really cool. And just to give a quick overview of my network architecture, it looks something like this. I have my main Proxmox server, which holds the ZFS pool and my RAID hard drives, right? I then created a virtual machine within Proxmox and this virtual machine actually houses my storage solution being open media vault. From there, I mounted 2.5 terabytes from my ZFS pool in Proxmox to open media vault. And then within open media vault, I created a network share. And this network share is now accessible to anybody on my local network. So me, my girlfriend, that's pretty much it. And it works good. So it's been about a week ever since I set this entire thing up. This has been running 24 seven, seven days a week for one week. And it's been a game changer. I've been able to clear up a few hundred gigabytes from my desktop. And honestly, all my storage lives here. In the meantime, I've also set up a VPN. So I'm able to actually access this from anywhere in the world. So I can connect to it to the VPN, access my files, and overall, it's been really, really lovely. I also have many Docker containers running other services inside of it, and overall, this is a 10 out of 10. So, I strongly recommend, if you have the knowledge or know-how to do this, please do yourself a favor, get a cheap computer off of eBay, and make yourself a home lab. You won't regret it.